Hi, my name is Rory Canterbury. I'm going to be host today on Arch Talk 101 uh, with our special guest uh, on the line. We're going to talk some archery today, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, Ellen, uh, introduce yourself and tell our audience a little something about you. You're, you're muted, Ellen. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a minute, I couldn't hear you. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> yeah, it happens. No, I guess once it recorded, I, it swapped over. Or I may have done it at some point, but um, my name is Alan Marcy. I've shot uh, single string archery for probably 11 or 12 years now. Um, you know, just uh, I fell in love with it. You know, at the Howard Hill Traditional Archery Event, which I help, you know, I help put on each year with uh, with my good pal Terry Harris, and uh, that that was later on. But you know, that's where it all came to me. You know, as far as the love of archery goes. Yeah, it's like what what got you started in archery? Uh, so I <laughs> I was kind of I was kind of a punk, you know, when I was younger. Just uh, you know. I played music and done all this other good stuff. And, uh, I, I went through a divorce and shortly after that divorce, uh, well, not shortly, it was maybe a year or so after that divorce, I met my wife now, her name's Amanda and, uh, her dad was, uh, that's where I met her parents actually at first was at, at that event. It's the first time I ever met them. And I was like, Oh, this is pretty cool. You know? And I kind of showed a little interest in it and that was it. But one day I, I get home from work and my, Amanda says, uh, you know, dad's coming by. I was like, yeah. And I go, I go, all right, cool. She said, uh, she said, he's got you something. And I was like, what, what do you mean? She goes, I don't know. You'll find out. So he bought, he bought me a $120 Samick Sage, 40, 45 pound, uh, 45 to 28, you know, take down, you know, beginner bow. And I got out there and, uh, I started shooting a couple and then, you know, I went to a couple of events and things and, uh, was like, Oh, there's, you know, I, I got, I want to be good at this. So I just kind of, I fell in love with it from the first pool and just kept pushing and trucking, you know? Yeah. It, it's amazing how, how everybody gets started. Everybody's got a different story and, you know, they're, they're all unique and, and kind of interesting. And, uh, does your wife shoot as well? Oh yeah, for sure. Amanda, she, she shoots, she's a, she's a, she's a killer, you know, she's a base. She shoots, uh, actually the whole family shoots or has shot in the past. You know, once they get to a certain point, they, they stop thinking mom and dad's cool. So they'd rather just stay at home and play, you know, video games or on their cell phone or whatever. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes the kids will just really take off and and, and drive the parents, you know, it's like, okay, I want to do this. And, uh, right, right. You're, you're with me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know, uh, I know, uh, you know, when we first got started, everybody had a bow. We've, we've accumulated bows from just about every shoot here in the Southeast. And, you know, you, you have to forgive me. I'm not really sure where you're located there. Uh, Roy. I'm in Nebraska, Nebraska. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, so we travel all over the, the Southeast, you know, Mississippi, Tennessee, Florida. Uh, yeah, well, actually, you have to go to Georgia, but Tennessee is a big hot spot down here. And we, we've been all over the place, accumulated bows, and everybody had a bow. And now I've got walls of bows and things stacked up everywhere. And, you know, nobody wants to shoot it but me. So I've, I've got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do kind of collect some uh, archery equipment and, I know after I close my 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 store, I, I have a whole lot of excess stuff that I had. You know, I've got, you know, rests and sites that are brand new, still in original packages. And, you know, when I close it, I kept all the archery stuff because I sold out the fishing stuff because I just wanted fishing. So I especially just kept all my archery stuff. And, you know, so I have supplies all over the place. And if everybody if if ever anybody needs anything you're you're the go-to guy Roy. right yeah it may not be the newest and 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 best stuff but hey you know it it works and um you know i know how to set them up because i've been setting them up that way with those type of equipment for years right 
Um, <clears throat> so you had a store. What? I'm. So this is a little bit of a role reversal for me. So, uh, you know, typically I, uh, you know, in the, well, in the past we had the break and trad podcast, which at this point has kind of, uh, has been dissolved a little bit and, uh, currently working on a few other things. The, uh, a black warrior traditional, um, uh, I'm going to say show, but it's going to be show slash gear type situation. So I'm typically used to being the one asking the questions <laughs> and it's, and it's kind of hard for me to sit here and, and answer them. But, uh, I'm, I'm curious about your store, man. Yeah, I, I had it. Um, I, I was working and I decided, you know, what, what are the rich people have? They have, they own a business, you know, it's like, okay, right idea, wrong business. But, you know, so I bought, uh, so it was called the tackle box and they sold, you know, fishing bait and tackle and equipment. And uh, the guy that I bought it from had arch equipment in there. He's a PSC dealer. And, you mm -hmm. know, so I went down to the PSC and spent a week down there at their, their school. And, you know, so I sold PSE and, and Browning and, um, you know, their Martin. I also was a Martin dealer. Oh, as yeah. well. And okay. I couldn't be a Matthews dealer because there was one too close. And, you know, it's kind of hard to so Matthews and other bows, you, you got to focus on one main one. And I focused on uh, PSE, um, excellent equipment. And, you know, I liked them. I shot them well. And uh, so I, I mostly just sold them. And then yeah. um, I also had muzzleloader stuff in there. And I didn't really muzzleload at the time. I had never even shot one. And so the guys come in and I just started asking, them, it's like, hey, you know, what equipment do you need? You know, I'll stock what you need. And so nice. I started stocking stuff that is, hey, this is what I use. Okay, ordered some in, kept it on hand. <laughs> you know, right, right. I didn't know what they needed, so they knew. So I just started stocking that. And I'd spent many years doing martial arts, so I added martial arts equipment in the store. Oh, yeah, that's so cool, man. I had one of the few stores uh, that sold martial arts equipment at that time. You either had to go to wherever you was taking lessons from and buy whatever they had or come to me. Because I sold, mm -hmm. you know, all all the other brands except I didn't sell the brands that the 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 master that I was taken from. I didn't sell his brand. I stayed away from that just so you know I'm not competing against him. But all his all had his right. on it. You know, mine were just right. And, and you get different people coming in, and I had one group come in, and for every Halloween they always dressed up different theme. This one year was martial arts. So what did come in, and I said, where are you where are you going? Uh, you know where he's where you taking lessons at and they say oh it's it's for a party they have a theme next one come in well where do you guys no it's for a party so by the time about the third or fourth one i'm saying okay we already have one of these one of these one of these you need to buy this so everybody had something different <laughs> <laughs> you know well it, it's like you know, ask them the questions you know yeah and it's not far it's not like uh it's not two different aspects you know because a lot of people consider you know archery uh, to be a, a, a type of martial art, you know, so there you go, you got archer gear and then martial art gear all in the same place. Yeah. Sounds good to me. <laughs> well, and then a lot of the things, you know, cause I'd studied martial arts for so long. I, I studied Hapkido and, and that's a lot of joint locks, arm bars, throws. We also did kicks and punches. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff in there. And I've been doing that um, before I learned how to shoot back tension release. Mm -hmm. so of course, naturally, once I learned that and figured that out, I incorporate the two together in how I teach. Because okay. one of the things that you learn is in martial arts, you want to be efficient with your power. You know, when it goes right. straight to target, and if you go off in an angle, especially if you're trying to break a board, you just hurt your hand. If you go through it, it don't hurt. If you don't, right. it hurts. So I incorporate all that. And then my teaching style is to. I'm going to tell you how I do it. I'm going to tell you what I think is the best way. And I'm going to tell you why I think it's the best. Because if I don't you tell you, you why, it's like, well, why do that? Because I said so, it's not an answer. Right. And, right. and then once we do that, now then we're going to modify to <laughs> you. Because everybody's going to shoot differently. You know, right. same basics there, but there's going to be some little variation. And, you know, so I've, I've taught hundreds of people how to shoot. And, you know, it's, it's fun, you know, especially when you take somebody that's never shot like you, when you started, you know, you, you shot your first bow 
and the first arrow went off and it's like cool oh man this is forever <laughs> right you know it's it, it's so so fun when you, when you see somebody do that I've, I've had people come in where he was buying a bow looking at it and i asked you know ask her uh, a couple times because last times it was the guy buying the bow it's, other times it's the other way around but uh, right. it's one lady come in and, and said you know you want to shoot it's like no it's like well we can set one up just shoot once all it takes is one, man. That's all it you takes. You couldn't shoot once. It's like, oh, this is fun. Can I shoot it again? <laughs> of course you can. You can shoot more yep. times. And, and right. now then they figured out how, how much fun it was. And, uh, you know, I, I've had others come in, you know, where, where the lady's wanting to get a bow. And I had one lady come in. I've told, just told this story a couple of times, but uh, he had shot. I don't remember if he was shooting compounds or recurves, but. He was, he had been shooting for a while. She was just starting out. She come into me. And so I'm in there teaching how to shoot. Cause every time I sold a bow, I'm going to teach how to shoot. Last thing I do is, oh, right. here, how's that feel? Okay, good. Uh, you know, right. I bought my first bow, which ended up being two and a half long, two and a half inches longer than my draw length and three inch longer than I shoot now. And the lady handed it to me and I said, how's that feel? I didn't know anybody. I said, okay. Yeah, thirty-two inch draw. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm twenty-nine and a half. You know, so I'm drawing clear back here. You know, almost to my ear. Right. And you know, now I I found out when I went through the classes, at twenty-nine and a half is what my draw length is. But I shoot twenty-nine. That extra half inch means that winter time, I don't hit my coat. Hmm. Yeah. So so that extra half inch, and it just it just felt you know so much better. And getting used to it though. Oh man, you know, it was a Friday class. And Saturday and Sunday was the final one. Went in for the Friday class. This is your 29 and a half inch. My bow was set for 32. If you want to continue, your bow has to be at 29 and a half inches. Otherwise, you can't continue. So I'm scrambling hmm. around getting, you know, I can't get shorter modules because it was too old a one. It's, you know, it wasn't like the new ones. Now you just change a module, rotate it. So I'm yeah. different strings and I finally got it down to my 29 and a half. And I was like, oh, this feels too short. This feels too short. And I was like, oh, okay. After a while, feels good. Oh, I'm going to shorten it up a little bit more. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and and it just you just have to go through that. And, and other people don't understand. And uh, I've taken and um, guys come in to the shop, group in, oh, I don't know, maybe six inches or so at 20 yards. And mm -hmm. I'll look at it. First thing, their draw length's too long. So we shorten that up, teach him how to shoot. And as one guy, I was been about 45 minutes with him and he was now grouping in about two inch groups and, and just 45 minutes of teaching. Yeah. Yeah. The proper uh, technique is going to do it. Yeah. I mean, it don't, it don't, you know, for me, I have good teachers, you know, I, I, I would say um, some of the best teachers really, because there was, they pushed me a little bit, you know, I mean, it did, it wasn't 45 minutes, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't even 24 hours. It was more like over a couple period, you know, a couple years or something like that. But I found for myself, it was, um, for me, you know, muscle memory is a big thing, you know, trying right. to recreate and, and do the, you know, do the same thing over and over and over again until I don't have to think about it anymore. Once it, once I see a good solid shot, I just try to maintain in that in that position, you know, and follow through. Yeah, and, and that's one thing we learn in martial arts as well is uh, you have to repeat that technique hundreds of times before you stop thinking about it and just do it. Uh, yeah. You know, you get you know you get where you're used to moving your hands around and you drop something just automatically down to reach and, and wait for it to hit your hand. You know, most people drop something they reach for it. You know, after right. he's like, oh, then look, fall on your hand. You know, you just let it <laughs> drop to you. You know, you go to where it's going to be, not where it's at, because by the time you get there, it's gone. And uh, some of the things, you know, that I've learned in that, you know, over the 20 years of doing Hapkido, I've able to take in and help in the teaching because, you know, like anything else, as you teach something, you actually get better at it when you run into problems. It's like, right. oh, so we finally figure out a problem. And then it's like, oh, okay. So the next person has that problem. Let's try this. You might have spent 
an hour trying to figure out the problem was that one person, but the next person, you're a genius because you knew right away. What, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes, I mean, just this is uh, a story of my wife and I were shooting. We were uh, we were headed to Pennsylvania for the 22 Lancaster Classic. So we knew that, you know, like I said, we both have shot traditionally um, forever. At that point, probably 10 or 11 years, you know, at that point, shot traditionally off the shelf, knock, you know, finger on the knock, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So we're, we're trying to convert because we all know that, uh, you know, a lot of the barebow guys, they didn't really have a traditional category, but, you know, they convert to barebow. And barebow itself is a little, you know, there's a, there's a, they get an up on you a little bit. You know, they, they get a, it's a little easier. I mean, I know there's technique, don't get me wrong. It's not easy by any any way, but for example, like if you're shooting traditionally off the shelf, knock up, and you're shooting 20 yards, and you have a you know three inch gap to center, right? So you take that gap out and and barebow where you're constantly aiming point on just due to a, a crawl. So we knew that they were going to have you know kind of an advantage on us, and we just started to convert over to. Uh, uh, elevated rest, you know, a uh, plunger aspect and rocking a uh, rocking a crawl in order to get our point on. Well, I, I started getting it figured out, got it situated, and my wife was struggling, you know. And she didn't talk to me for three days because she couldn't, we couldn't figure out. It was uh, fr so frustrating on on both parts where we couldn't figure out why her arrow wouldn't do the same thing as my arrow would do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we finally figured out that, uh, you know, plunger tension has a, a big, a big part in that, like a big part in flight, you know, and it's crazy. Just one turn on that plunger can affect arrow flight by three inches, you know, as far as left and right goes in a 20, 20 yard aspect or an 18 meter aspect. Right. So we, we finally got it figured out and she come in and we, we did all right, but you know, it was our first one. And, uh, and we hope to go back this year and make it happen. Yeah, it's it's amazing how much just a little tweak can make a difference. And and you know, when when you set up a bow, you know, when I had my shop, I'd go in and what I had a super tune, and I don't know why I'd check, you know, the horizontal and vertical, but I also check the third axis on your sights. You know, my 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 jig would allow me to point it down, check your level, make sure it's still on because sometimes you have to shim them because if you're shooting up or downhill, you know, like in mm -hmm. a 3D, you're shooting downhill. If your bubble's off, you use your bubble and you turn it. And what a lot of people don't understand is if you have a little cant in your bow and you have your pin straight up and down, if you can them now, then as you move up, you know, if you're pointing to the right, as you move up, you're shooting more to the right. Right. Because you, know, you got that little cant in your bow. So if you're going to naturally can't that you got to set your pins up so that it still stays straight. And oh yeah, there's there's a lot to you know setting those up. And one way to find out is take and shoot at your 20 yard range. You know, shoot shoot your 20 yard pin, shoot your 30 yard, your 40, your 50, your 60, how many pins you have. And if they don't right. go straight up, there's something wrong. You know, either your sight is off or you're not holding level. Uh, or something uh, canted slightly yeah and right. you know if you're just shooting you know like off the shelf you know a lot of the traditional ones kind of bend over and uh, just holds it onto the shelf or onto the hand or um but they're not you know gap shooting and uh, yeah i shoot instinctively when i shoot my recurve um i just oh, yeah? target draw back and shoot i don't look at the arrows look at look at the the bow i don't reference anything because as soon as i start doing that i might as well put sights on it oh yeah yeah see uh, well you know i mean i i don't i'm i'm gonna play devil's advocate for a second <laughs> okay as far as far as gap shooting goes now or gap shooting in regards to because i i still feel traditionally that's you know we're still on the same on the same playing field as far as what what people consider instinctive to uh gap shooting you know uh so it's i feel like it's the same thing and i could and you know i take a lot of judgment on that i guess because yeah. a lot of people say you know instinctively i just burn a hole in the target and sling an arrow and hope that it hits well so how to me i think about well how many times did you do that you know what i mean 
Yeah. And so you didn't so you didn't pace off at 20 yards, okay? So you just kind of randomly paced off. Now that would to me that would make a little more sense, but traditionally if we're hunting or we're taking shots, a lot of the times we're shooting within a 20 yard 20 yard range, so we want to be proficient right. in 20 yards, right? So we kind of step off 20 yards and then we move forward 10, 15, that kind of thing. But tr- like in an instinctive aspect, you've shot that 20 yard distance and you say, okay, well, I burn a hole, boom. All right, well, now I'm off. Now what am I going to do different? And it may not be like a mental calculation of gap, you know, say my right. gap's three inches off center, but your body has tuned itself to hold that bow at a different height you know right. you're, yeah in, in order to get to that point on and i feel like i feel like they're kind of the same for me you know as far as like me i'm i'm all analytical i like to pick at just about everything it gets me in trouble a lot of times you know so <laughs> yeah. i'll I, I draw a straight line i'm like why am i off you know I, I adjust a tweak you know trying to get everything i get my gap at 20 yards and then i you know i might, I might take a little you know a little crap from some others you know it's like uh you're you know the whole sight thing which i don't really i think we're all in the same boat to be honest with you it's just it's just how we go about it right well and i mostly use my recurve for bow fishing oh yeah so so in bow fishing you know have you ever did any bow fishing reflective lot yeah yeah well the problem you have in bow fishing is the fish is there and it's gone you know so if you (laughs) So if I have to try and find a, a gap and try and figure it all out, uh, the fish is gone. It's it's one of those, you see the right. fish, draw back, shoot. You don't have time. Right. Uh, now, if right. I was to, I mostly shoot compound. So, um, okay. and if I pick up my recurve, I'm shooting instinctively. If I pick up my compound, I can't shoot it instinctively. It's just one of those things that it's a different weapon. I'm, I'm it's completely different i'm drawn back i'm getting my anchor point you know i got right. my picture button my peep i'm looking for my pins and you know go through right. the whole process and, and and shoot uh where with the recurve uh, i'm not going i still go through the same process you know come back mm-hmm. anchor point you know and follow through but i don't right. i don't look for sights because in bow fishing you haven't got time you know so sometimes i can see that a little bit of time but you know, yeah. if I was to go like like you and probably start going in in some tournaments using the recurve, I'd probably have to figure out something else to do. But that's yeah, some, what I use. Well, not before. So um, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, instinctive shooters that you know are they're on point, man. You know, and and I really don't understand. To me, I I, I guess. I guess if I wanted to be sufficient or proficient in an instinctive aspect, I would, I would be out there every day, all day long, you know, trying to figure out what, what's a good spot, you know, but there's, there, you know, I, I know people that wear it out when, and say that they shoot instinctively. I just can't do it. You know, Ty Phillips, I don't know if you know Ty Phillips. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's an instinctive shooter. He's a killer shot. You know, uh, we've, we know people all over who can wear it out. I just can't figure it out. I've got, I've got to know that at 35 yards, I'm a foot and a half over the target. You know what I mean? I got to know yeah. that in, in order to be on point, but I couldn't, I can't shoot a compound bow. I, and I've tried and it doesn't like, none of it makes sense to me. I can't make <laughs> it happen. I've tried, I've tried to shoot. I actually had a, a good buddy of mine. His name's, uh, Corey Crawford, he he shoots compound, and uh, he was like, "Hey, come over and shoot a couple, shoot some with me." And I got out there, and he was like, "You want to shoot this?" I said, "I'll give it a shot." I, had, I was anchored down. He was like, "Yeah, just anchor back, and you know, find your sights, you know, look through your peep, find your pin, and just put your pin where it needs to go." Dude, I shot clean into the dirt, lost his arrow, everything. Just <laughs> I, I couldn't figure it out. I was like, "No, man, this is all you. You can have that." Well, and you know that's why there's so many different options, you know. And there are some that will take the recurve, I mean the compound bow, and no sights on it, just shoot it instinctively. Um, I've of heard of that too. I... Yeah, because it gives you a little more let off. You don't have, you know, with your recurves and long bows, as you draw back, it gets harder and harder and harder, and you can't really right. 
Well, with the compound, you can draw back and you can hold, and now you can go through a little bit different process. You know, you don't have to hold all that weight. You know, that's advantage. Right. And a lot of the right. new boat fishing setups are actually compounds. You know, they're a lot of them are compounds, but you know, me, you know, that that's just me. I've been I've been shooting for uh 50 years. <laughs> so really, you know, I started back in the 60s with a, a recurve, uh wood arrows and fletching. It was feathers. And yeah, there you go. At that point, our option was wood or fiberglass for the bow, recurve or longbow, and wood or wood arrows and feathers for fletching. That was the option. <laughs> you didn't have all these veins that come in later. You didn't have the compound. Right. They weren't developed. And I think the first compound that was made, it wasn't really available, but in the late 60s, I think 67 when it first came in, but the, you didn't get to the mid 70s when you really had compounds that were really readily available that you could get. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've been shooting for quite a while and got my first compound. And uh, my first compound I shot was actually my brother's and it was a, the Bear Whitetail 2, you know. Oh, yeah. Bunch of cables and, and you, you move different pins to whether you wanted 65% let off or 50% or let off. And, you know, there's a single string on it and all these steel cables running around different pulleys. And... I got you. Well, you do much hunting, Roy? Yeah, most mostly deer. I don't do much turkey, um, although yeah. I probably should start because we have a lot of turkeys around here. Where I'm at, we've got we got a flock that roams around here not too far from my house, about three dozen of them in it. Man. <laughs> well, I don't know what y'all seasons are, but I got to wait till spring in order to get out there for the turkey. I'm looking yeah. forward to this fall, though. We have a spring I mean, and a fall season. Oh yeah. When does y'all's fall season start? Um, it runs right along time with the deer season in September. I forget exactly when it starts, uh, but the archery starts in March and goes through April, and shotgun starts in uh, or goes through May, I think, and, and shotgun starts in April. Okay, so it's fairly cool. early. But the early season, you can't shoot hens; you only shoot bearded turkeys. Oh yeah, which is generally going to be a tom, but you know that you can't really tell if it has a beard and it's a hen. Well, it's legal game because it's, right. it's a bearded turkey, and well, they just said bearded turkey. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't say hen or hen or tom because you don't, or Jake, you don't know. You know, if it yeah. don't have a beard, you you just assume it's a hen. <laughs> right. Well, um. No, like I said, I'm looking forward to the fall. I, I'm getting geared up right now, starting to do some prep work and uh, scouting and things like that and getting situated, but yeah. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be another good season. I, I've got a, an area that we're going to try and get them to start moving around in daytime a little bit more. They're pretty much all not. Oh, yeah. They're pretty much yeah, not well, in that area. I run into that last year. I mean, you know, early season, October 15th, that's when both season starts here in the state of, of Alabama. And, uh, you know, early season I had, I don't know, I passed on a couple dough and uh, then about a quarter of the way into the season, I started getting, you know, hits on the, the camera and it was like midnight, two o'clock, everything went dark where I was at. I, I couldn't figure it out. It done, and everybody was saying the same thing. It's like every, all the deer went nocturnal last year, about a quarter of the way in the season. Couldn't figure yeah, it out. That's what I was getting on the cameras we had up um, in our our area. Uh, we were getting them at 10, 11, 12, 1, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I had one area that they were consistently coming in probably a half hour before shooting time. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a good spot for a tree right there. Uh, so right. they're coming through then, and uh, so come rifle season, I set up on top of the hill, figuring maybe they'd come through, and, and I could see them because that maybe they'd hang around, and nothing came through. And uh, hmm. so then I, we left the cameras up, and then come February, I think it was when when I pulled the cameras, I one day I found them in the morning and night. There was about oh three or four of them come through what area that we. Knows a real good popular area. 
because we see them there yeah. a lot. And but they were during the day, you know, in the morning during the light and at night during the light. But most of them, every other one of them was in the middle of the night. Middle of the night. I know I started getting uh, a little frustrated towards the end of the season. I think I seen one spike roll through, and it was right at dusk. But he was too far away. You know, he was at 60 yards. I was like, come on in, come on in. He never did. He just turned around and walked away, and I had to I had to come down. I was like, All right, I'm done. I'm going to the house. Yeah. So. Well, I, I had a small small buck and a bit larger buck on the camera, you know, running throughout the season. And then I did see a third one uh, come in that February when I pulled the cameras. Look at them. I, I need to get the cameras back out, start monitoring what they're doing now and and, and try and put some stuff out to get them go during the day. But it's kind of hard to hunt them when they're always, always at night. Yeah, you can't, can't do it, man. You can't do it. No. One thing you can't hunt at night is is deer. <laughs> That's right. Unless you got a really big lot, but no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> Uh, anyhow, yeah. uh, well, you know, I, I don't mean to, you know, cut it short or anything, but uh, I got a little bit I need to take care of. Are we we good, Roy? Oh, yeah, it's whatever time you have, and it's been great talking with you. And, uh, um, you know, you get your new podcast thing going, let me know, we'll get on and, and we'll talk about that. And oh, yeah, absolutely, and, and we'll promote that as well. And not really sure. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really sure how it's going to play out yet. I, you know, one thing that creates a lot of fatigue is, you know, is, is a weekly dedicated podcast. And, uh, I don't want to, uh, for, you know, what I, I guess what I'm trying to go with now is I want it to be a little more laid back and, and both oriented in both the, uh, the competitive aspect of archery and, you know, the traditional and, um, the hunting aspect of archery, you know, and I'm, I'm not really sure how that's going to play out or if it's even going to come to fruition, but I, I'm working on it, man. As soon as we get it all situated, you're more than welcome. I, I, you'll be one of my first if I can get it. Yeah. You know, yeah. That'd together. be good. Yeah. I, I put out a podcast twice a week uh, on the podcast comes out Mondays and Fridays. And then the video comes out on Tuesdays and Saturday nights. And, and of course the, okay. the Arch Talk one on Facebook group, they get, they get to communicate with it live. So uh, they get it, you know, when, it, when we record it and I it's you. fun. I get to talk to archers all over the world and <laughs> they're just, this well, you week know. I talked to Austria and, and Germany oh, yeah. and Serbia and Croatia and Canada. And I, 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 I got awesome. Scotland going to be on here pretty soon. And, and, you know, South Africa and Canada. And of course, a lot of people from the United States, <laughs> Right, right, right. Uh, well, that's awesome, man. I, you know, I, I, I look for. I, you know, I'm going to go back and try to, you know, pick up on some of it. Is it, is it all, is it a video aspect or is it both audio aspect or? Uh, well, on the podcast, it's just audio. That'd be like okay. Spotify. It's also available. Okay. On Audible. You can go on to Audible. Right. You can listen to it free there. Um, cool. As a thing you can do, and then if you want to watch the video inside the Arch Talk One One Facebook group. You get to watch the video, so you'll see exactly what we're recording here, as well as okay. on my YouTube channel. Uh, that will be a video of this, and just um, doing this will be a little thumbnail at the beginning, and then you know the splash screens at the end. And then if you go right. out to archtalk101.com, you can also access the YouTube video from there as well, as well as other things too that I use out okay. to promote. So uh, you know, it's it's all over and. Uh, those that have businesses, nice thing about that. We talk to a business and they're more than welcome to the video to promote their business. And, cool. and, and we promote it to whatever, you know, whatever we can do to help archers out, you know, yeah, even, right. even if it's not an archer related business, you know, we're still helping archers out because a lot of us archers, we do other things. You know, we do yeah. uh, guns. We, some of us, uh, we do have businesses and Hey, it just if we can help you out some way to do it so that you can get more time in the field shooting, hey, let's go for it. Right. Absolutely. Everybody helping everybody out, man. Yeah. Well, that's what archery does. And archers need to right. help each other out one way or another. All right. You're absolutely right. Also, um, yeah, you, know, you mind if I give a shout out to um uh, my my our sponsor? Oh no, my go sponsor. Ahead. Um 
So, uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in the traditional world and all things traditional or even bare bow to a certain extent, uh, Three Rivers Archery is a good place to go. They sponsor both my wife and I as, uh, as uh, sponsored team shooters. And, you know, we really enjoy shooting for those guys. They're really nice people, and they'll help you out anytime you guys get a chance. Yeah, that you hear a lot of good things about Three Rivers Archery. And yeah. right now I have enough supplies. I don't really need to buy much. Uh, so right. I don't really buy much, but, you know, that's kind of the place to go for a lot of your equipment. And they do support, you know, the archery community really well. Absolutely. And Jonathan Karch, man, I've, you know, shook hands with him and spoke with him and hung out with him several times. I and mean, he's, he's a real down to earth guy and he's willing to talk hunting and archery whenever you get the opportunity and he'll help anybody out. Trust me. So just, you know, go online. I guess it's three rivers archery dot com and uh you can get stuff whatever you need to get started whatever you need to keep going you know yeah that, that's good we, you know we need to help out anybody that's helping the archers out help them out right well any parting thoughts before we go um you know no man yeah you know, i just want to say i appreciate you uh you know having me on the show i it's really cool and uh you know, I enjoy doing this kind of thing and I enjoy talking to archery all the time. And uh, it was, uh, like I said, it was a it was a change of pace for me, but I really appreciate, you know, you having me on. Um, and, I'll, and I'm and i going to, you know, promote this show. And, and I apologize, to be completely honest, I, I my head's all over the place at all times. And I don't really get an opportunity to listen to many podcasts other than, you know, maybe the Rogan show every once in a while. But uh but yeah, no, I'll check it out and I'll put I'll push 101 and you know try to make things happen here. Yeah, yeah, it's just anything to help each other out. That's that's what we're here for, and and it's just so much fun talking to archers all over the world. And and you know, hey, if you have a unique story, you're welcome to come on. You know, the only requirement <laughs> is we start talking archery. Where we right, at, exactly. doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, you know, I. I Hey, go ahead. Go. No, I was just going to say, no, I mean, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun talking with you, and, and I'm sure we'll we'll connect up again another time. And, you know, you're welcome back on the podcast. If you got something else you want to talk about or promote, hey, let's let's get on and chat some more. Okay. Sounds good to me, man. Yeah. My name is Roy Canterbury, and I've been your host today on Arch Talk 101. And we're going to have a, a lot of a lot of fun on these podcasts and support the archery community. And we'll see you on the next one.